Right now, I'm gonna show you how to replace the sky in Photoshop instantly. And there's also some new features inside of sky replacement. Hey, Cafe Crew, Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. Let's jump in and replace the sky in this photo. And I'm also gonna give you guys a special set of skies that I've prepared for you. But first thing, let's choose edit. And then we go down to sky replacement. Now, when your sky replacement pops open, immediately you're gonna see the sky being changed. Now, first time you use this, you're not gonna see anything in here. So what you wanna do is hit the little arrow, grab the gear, and then choose append default skies. And let's just do that right now. And what that will do is it'll bring in the set. Let me select these and delete them. Just so I have the same as what you have. And if you hit the control or command key, hit the arrow, that'll flip open all the groups. Control command opens them all at once. And we can see these are the skies that come with Photoshop. Now, all we need to do is select a different one. And we can see, you know, how these different skies look against the photo. And I think some of these ones are looking pretty good. But I want to bring my own in. So under sky, make sure you hit that little arrow. And in this plus key, you don't want to go under here and choose import skies. Don't do that, even though it seems like that's what you should do. Click the plus button. And then navigate to a folder. And here's five skies. I'm going to give you guys these and just click open and you'll notice look at this it brings all five of these in all at once now if you want to put these in a new set we can do that let's call it uh, psc just click that little folder icon and then we've created a set let me select one two three four five these are all my skies hold the shift key select them and then drag them into the group and notice that we can put that group above the others if we want and we can organize them this way and these are some of the skies that you guys are going to get in this group and you can see how these skies will dramatically change the look of the image we're going to use this one right now called pink squid and by the way if you guys want these skies i'll give them to you they're at photoshopcafe.com forward slash vault there you'll find a whole ton of goodies, including these skies that you can have for free. Enjoy them. All right, let's break them down and see what they do. So let's just click on the interface and then we've got certain areas here. The first area works with the edge and that's the transition between the sky and the foreground. So if we fade this, we're going to get a more abrupt transition between the two notice how very harsh it is we can shift that edge so if you want to go down or you want to go up more you can do that so what that does is that moves that edge and clearly we want to have it near where the horizon is but there's times you might not want to and then it's faded in to make it match so that's what that group does then we've got the next set which is sky adjustments this is where we determine how bright or what color the sky is going to be. If we move it towards the right in temperature, it's going to make it warmer. Move it to the left, it's going to make it cooler or more blue. Let's make it warmer or more into the yellows. I'm kind of liking that. And of course, we can adjust the brightness. We can make it brighter or we can make it darker. See that? So you can really change the time of the day or just get it to match the photo a little bit better so that's what sky adjustment does by the way if you see this little arrow here and you don't see those just click on that and it'll expand it now the other option is to scale if you want to make that sky larger or smaller we can change the scale and if the light is coming from the wrong direction choose flip and now the sky will go the other way in fact i like it this way it's looking pretty good all right now let's go down to the next setting which is the foreground adjustment. So we've done the sky. Now we want to adjust the color and the brightness of the foreground so it matches the sky. Now the first thing we want to do is see where that sky transitions into our photo. 
We've got two options, lighting mode, multiply or screen. Screen will lighten it, give us kind of a foggy mist, which doesn't look too good on, the, on this particular image. Some images, this looks really good for a haze. In this situation, we're gonna use multiply. And it's just gonna make it a little darker and I think it looks better for that transition. Then we can adjust the lighting. So we take that color, if we take the color all the way to the left, we now have our original color. As we move it to the right, we're adding more of the color in from that sky. And then we can just adjust this. And notice that's kind of affecting us more in that transition area once again. Just to let you know, you know, if you want to change the sky area, we can click on this brush and you could, uh, you know, add it or take it away from certain areas. The Alt or the Option key will paint it away. Notice we're removing it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and I'm going to break it down and show you everything. So you can duplicate the layer or create new layers. Let's do new layers and click OK. I'm going to pull out the layers panel and I'm going to show you everything that's happened. It's actually quite amazing. So if we turn off the sky replacement group, there's our original image. Now, this is now built up of layers, masks, and adjustment layers. This is really important because it, number one, shows us how the sky replacement was done. So it's a good learning tool. But more important, it gives us the flexibility to change anything because it's non-destructive. So why don't we go inside, turn on the group so we can view things and then just roll down these eyes and we're going to turn them all off. And we're going to start with just the sky. So if we look at this, there's our sky. And the reason it fits in here is because there's a mask. If I hit the Alt or the Option key and I click, you can see there's the mask and there's where I went over that manually with that other tool. But you can see where it masked it out. Now, if it didn't quite get it right, you could go in here and you could manually paint in this mask. Wherever you paint black, the sky is going to be hidden. Where you paint white, it's going to be shown. And this area of gray where it's blending is that edge that we created earlier on. So we could change the way that it's masking. In fact, if you didn't want it so much on that foreground, make sure that mask is selected. Hit the D key to reset foreground background colors. We're going to hit the X key so we've got black. And I could paint on here and notice now we're painting it away where we didn't really want it into that transition. So you can mask this later on yourself. All right, so that's the sky. Now, if we look at how we change, remember we changed the brightness and the temperature? Well, we've got these two adjustment layers. There's the brightness, double click on it, and you can see it's just used a brightness contrast adjustment layer. You can adjust this if you want. Want to make it brighter or darker? You have that ability. And you could also mask if you didn't want it in certain areas. Now the sky temperature, remember we changed the color. That's just a color balance. All right, so we've got those two on. All right, let's have a look at the foreground. And remember how we changed the foreground? So the first one or the most important one that happens is the foreground color. There's that foreground color there. And if we look at this, it's just a, a curve. We go into the blue channel there and we can see that this was adjusted. See that? So if you want to make it even stronger, pull that down even more. So you can see we have the ability to change that. Once again, you can mask it. Then there was a foreground lighting. If you remember, we had multiply mode or we had the ability to go into screen mode and look at that. So if you did want to screen it in this area and not have it there, you could do the mask. In this case, let's go back to multiply. And if I hit the Alt or the Option key, you can see this transition was created. You can blur this more if you want it. Okay, so hopefully I've demystified how the sky replacement works. It works very, very quick. But now you know how to go into each of those layers and masks and make those adjustments. You can get that sky to match exactly how you want it to. 
So I'm glad that Adobe opened all that up into layers rather than just applying that as a simple filter. I'm curious, did you guys get anything out of this? Is sky replacement something that you guys like or do? Let me know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new here, first of all, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the notifications and then you won't miss any tutorials from me. And anyway, guys, if you like this, do me a favor and smash the like button into dust. The reason I say that is it helps us with the algorithm and helps uh, the video get discovered by more people on YouTube. So anyway, guys, till next time, I'll see you at the cafe.